Hello, everyone, and thank you for for the invitation and the interest in in our Argentinian case, our experience. I hope it will be a contribution to the I don't know the international fight for human rights, especially in Turkey. And thank you also, my fellow panelists Emilio and David, for your insightful presentations. I have to say that I am not a lawyer, and I make this explicit because I am going to address eminently legal issues, but from a more social historical point of view. I also want to say that this presentation was uh, collectively produced and based on previous uh, sales uh, documents that you can find in our website. So I'm going to try to address the following questions. What is the experience of Argentina and the Inter-American Court regarding the statute of limitations and amnesty laws? Why it was established that they should not apply to the gross violations of human rights and crimes against humanity that took place in Argentina between 1976 and 1983? As I will try to address the Inter-American human rights system, played a prominent role in the fight against impunity in the region and specifically, especially in Argentina. Also, transnational jurisdictions played a role, as Emilio already mentioned, there were cross processes between Spain and Argentina at different stages. Under international law, as you Already know states are obligated to investigate and punish human rights violations. However, the story of how these international or these principles of international law became applicable in Argentina in the context of widespread impunity requires telling our winding story of memory, truth, and justice. But before focusing in Argentina, uh, I think we can differ differentiate two major stages of the role of the inter-American system in these issues. Initially, the inter-American human rights system documented right violations and endorsed victims' claims through country reports, producing in local visit, as happened in my country on, in 1979 with the inter-American report on the case of Argentina, that ultimately informed the world about uh, the situation. My organization, CELS, was founded in that context of the preparation of that visit, selecting the cases, uh, filing testimonies. Then the other stage that we can differentiate took place when the individual petition system developed. The inter-American system began shaping key principles for justice, truth, and reparations in cases of widespread human rights violation. It challenged amnesty laws, as the case of Argentina shows. So now we can focus on the Argentinian case. The accountability process undergone by Argentina over the last 40 years, there's uh, from 1983, Till nowadays is a response to the crimes committed by the last and cruelest dictatorship experienced by my country. The uh, I, I don't know if, if you are all familiar with the kind of dictatorship we, we had in the 70s. The, the military took power on March 24th of 1976, initiating a dictatorship with distinct characteristics all three branches of the armed forces jointly constituting a government uh, called the Junta. The exceptional legislation coexisted with parallel secret norms that regulated repressive operations, clandestine. The repression was massive. There was uh, kidnapping, enforced disappearances, uh, torture. As you may know, uh, detainees were in a high number enforced disappeared. It later became known that disappearances was a systematic state driven policy that consisted of killing the victims and hiding or destroying the bodies. There was a particular feature of the Argentine repression strategy 
that was that uh, pregnant women were often kept alive for the purpose of giving birth, upon which their newborn, newborn babies were taken by other families, changing and hiding their real, real identity. This is the struggle of the abuelas de Plaza de Mayo, grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo. It is important to take into account this different, differentiated type of crime, since, as we will see, the arguments around its particularity configured one of the main strategies to oppose impunity laws. The military self-amnesty law in 1983, when the dictatorship was uh, coming to an end, um, intended to cover crimes was contested by Congress and the Supreme Court leading to justice for these uh, severe human rights violations in 1984, culminating in the um, well-known Junta's trial of 1985. You, you can watch the film of uh, last year, 1985 is the name of the film that, that focus in this specific trial. The justice of, obtained after the Junta trial and the spread of the investigations all over the country caused the military's fear of widespread trials and led to several mil, uh, military revolts that presented a serious threat to democracy in the first years of the transitional process. In short, these events prompted the government to change course and develop strategies to limit the trials. So there were two main decisions to limit the trial. First, the full stop law enacted on December 23 of 1986 established a 60 day period for resuming all claims against the military before civil courts. This is full stop. Uh, but contrary to what was expected, uh, the reduction of the crimes, of the claims, the amnesty law initiated what we call the frenetic activity of the federal courts. Within that short period of time, two months, hundreds of claims, claims were presented throughout the entire country. And at the end, when full stop came, the number of cases incurred had tripled. But tensions between the government and the military increased also the revolts and after several military actions and, and revolts, then President Alfonsín submitted to Congress the new obedience law, which was approved in 1987. The new obedience principle was to concentrate responsibility only in the highest hierarchies that, and that those subordinated obeyed orders and were considered free of responsibility. The direct effect of these two impunity amnesty, we call this uh, full stop and de obedience uh, impunity laws. Uh, as an effect, there was the armed prosecution of uh, 431 defendants and the definitive stop to most of ongoing investigations. Shortly after taking office, the next president, Menem, in 1990, issued presidential pardons that benefited all military who had been convicted of human rights violations. The presidential pardons marked the beginning of a long period of impunity. There was an important reaction from human rights organizations such as mine and other social movements all over the country who took to the street in protest. However, this blow did not prevent, well, that did not prevent us from seeking out other strategies for fulfilling our goals in the struggle for accountability. I will not address these other strategies in detail, but in this impunity context, it was possible to advance in terms of truth and reparation. Uh, with the turn of the century, with the new century, there was kind of a wave of accountability that began to grow in Latin America. So the idea that there were no 
national, international, nor ethical, nor legal or political grounds for sustaining impunity laws in Argentina gradually took root in different sectors of society and political agreements. A favorable international context to prosecute these grave offenses, a weakened military after the 90s, High protagonist of state actors and the role of human rights organizations facilitated the onset of new era of trials, as I will try to uh, explain. And this, as we will see, uh, meant that the, the inter-American system had a great influence. So I have to, to explain the um, Caso Simon, the Simon case that marked the onset of this uh, new phase of criminal justice that continues to, to nowadays, to our days. It started with a complaint filed by Abuelas de Plaza de Mayo, the grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo and Cells. These uh, organizations, grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo, are the grandmothers of those babies kidnapped in the 70s. And uh, this case was filed in the year 2000. The judiciary was already investigating the 1978 abduction of uh, Claudia Poblete that was eight months old at the time. Since this specific kind of crime was kept out originally outside of the scope of national uh, of uh, amnesty laws. So there, there was an opportunity because of this uh, specific particularity of this crime. So the, the lawyers at cells saw that there was an opportunity to show the, the paradoxical effect of the amnesty laws. In one hand, the crime of the children abduction could be investigated while the disappearances of, of the parents which enabled the kidnapping of the child could not. This way of reasoning on the repression chain was the human rights organization's main argument, both cells and, and abuelas, to seek for the annulment of the laws. In its first instance, uh, in this case in 2001, the federal judge used international human rights statements to sustain that states must prosecute serious human rights violations and, and subsequently charge two former police officers with the crimes. The Federal Chamber of Appeals, while confirming the ruling, sustained that, and I'm quoting, in the current context of constitutional development of human rights, repealing and declaring these laws, full stop and due obedience, and constitutional is not an alternative, it's a duty. This was the first time the judiciary used international human rights arguments to declare the nullity of amnesty laws. The increased uh, prominence of international human rights law in legal education and practice can be attributed to the 1994 constitutional reform in Argentina, which elevated international human rights treaties and led to their incorporation into law curricula. Um, I said elevated international human rights treaties because they have the same uh, legal status as the constitution. The National Congress also played a key role on the annulment of the amnesty laws, and uh, the then president, uh, Nestor Kirchner, stated he would support the Congress decision and at the same time to the debate, he signed a decree which ratified the Convention on the Non-Applicability of Statutory Limitations to War Crimes and Crimes Against Humanity. The House of Representatives approved the law that gave constitutional hierarchy of the convention in August, August 2003. However, and this is very important, it is considered that this convention was in force at the time of, at, at the time they even secured in the 70s, 
since it already integrated the general framework of international law. This is an important uh, point as to why this is not a case of retroactive application of the criminal law. And this was stated also by the Supreme Court. Then it also, uh, the House of Representatives approved the law which nullified the amnesty laws. This showed that Congress was also leaning in favor of accountability and particularly in favor of reactivating criminal justice. The Supreme Court also uh, showed signs in favor of challenging the amnesty laws after that and while appeal on Simon case, as I just said, uh, the, the appeal was still pending, but in 2004, it ruled in the Arancibia Clavel extradition case to, to Chile that crimes against humanity were not subject to statutes of limitation. In 2005, also in the framework of the same Simon case, the Supreme Court found that the impunity laws were contrary to international human rights law. In light of the president of the Inter-American Court in the Barrios Altos case, that is a very important reference, uh, the case of Barrios Altos. And then Argentina Supreme Court took Barrios Altos arguments on the state's obligations to investigate and sanction grave human rights violations and the impossibility of granting amnesty in favor of the perpetrators of crimes against humanity. Another contribution of the Inter-American system was the report 2892, in which the commission resolved the complaints made by the victims who argued the violation of the right to judicial protection by the action of the amnesty law. In that report, the commission concluded that their application was incompatible with the American Declaration of the Rights and Duties of Man and the American Convention on Human Rights and recommended the Argentine government to adopt measures to clarify and find the responsibility responsible for the crimes committed during the dictatorship. And the Supreme Court used these same arguments in uh, the Simon ruling. Thus, uh, the combination of national and international political and legal strategizing pursued by human rights organizations and clear will from some relevant state actors led eventually to the reopening of trials against perpetrators. This new stage of criminal accountability for past human rights violations has given some important results. Trials have grown in scope as well as in numbers. Roughly the numbers uh, at, at this moment is uh, 319 trials already had a sentence from the historical Shunta trial till now. Um, in total, 1,146 people were convicted and there were 253 acquittals in almost, almost the entire country with the exception of two provinces. The case is advanced. You know, time is running out because of biological reasons. And today there are 14 oral debates taking place in seven provinces. Of the 240 defendants, who were brought to trial, 185 are still under debate. The rest already died, 37, or were removed due to disability, 18 of them, and will not be tried for the crimes of which they were accused, they are accused. Um, Argentinian, so Argentinian path towards accountability has been far from linear. The actions for and backwards were performed by the different governments in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s until the process reached a point of uh, a point of convergence between state will and civil society claims in 2003. The, con the constant in this uh, changeable process through time has been the struggle of the relatives, 
and the human rights organizations, uh, among other civil society actors. I have to say, though, especially in the current political context of my country, that there is a lim there always has been a limited society sector uh, that rejected opposite the accountability measures. Now uh, they have a growing political representation with uh, significant chances of winning the election this year. So we are under alert uh, in this context. Well, the, the accomplishments I, I tried to, to describe are the results of the combination of many different elements. We can list some of them, uh, strong uh, human rights tradition and human rights organization, executives who support human rights, governments, a significant number of uh, judges willing to prosecute, a certain important uh, sensitivity to international human rights law and to regional development, and specifically the, the inter-American inter system, human rights system, also uh, with effective uh, memory policies. Uh, together, all together, these elements have led to the design of many uh, significant pro-accountability measures. As a balance, we can say that uh, Argentina's state has acknowledged the military responsibility in the crimes. Uh, this process still presents challenges. Maybe some cases will not face trial, but uh, although there there are certain obstacles, uh, we understand that the process is mostly consolidated after more than forty years of of struggle because this uh, started uh, in the seventies uh, during the repression. And we are still working in, in this process. So thank you all for your attention.